Hey everyone, it's Louise and welcome back to Along Came Mama. Today I'm joined once again by my partner in crime, Harold. Harold. <laughs> Today, if you can't tell, we have some food in front of us. It's because we're doing a mukbang video while discussing my birth story. The food that we have today is from a local Toronto restaurant called Viet Bao. Um, it's elevated Vietnamese restaurant. And the reason why we chose this food for today is because it's the last meal that I had right before I gave birth. Over here, we have some shaking beef, which is like, I'd say it's our favorite dish there. Yeah. This, we have their baby bok choy, their fried cauliflower. And over here, we have their fried chicken. So I guess we'll just eat and talk. <laughs> I guess this is how these things work. Basically, we pretty much ate this exact same meal literally the night before I went into labor. Yeah. We ordered this meal because my mom had like a premonition dream that I was in pain or something. So she called me like a few days before I gave birth and was like, are you okay? Like I had a dream that you were in a lot of pain. I was like, what? I'm like, no, I'm good. But as soon as we got off the phone, I was like, Harold, we need to pack. We need to get ready because like my mom's never wrong. I feel like the baby's coming. So yeah, we pretty but much- funny thing is we didn't even pack. Completely. Completely. No. We kind of waited for the last minute, but we'll get into that. Yeah. <laughs> a little bit later. Yeah, so we pretty much like we, washed and sanitized all the bottles. We sort of half-ass packed. Um, but then I was like, you know, I really want one last good meal before we don't have a chance to have a nice good meal for a very long time. So we ordered from our favorite restaurant. I would say it's yeah, pretty much say, yeah. top three, I guess, in the city. And yeah, we decided to have one last delicious meal. This is so good. Mmm. Oh, the first beef. one. That's delicious. <laughs> like the good thing about the shaking beef is that it comes with like this watercress salad, which is really like refreshing. And it comes with this sauce that I really don't know what's in it, but there's definitely lime. Um, but it's so good. Like you just want to drink the entire little container after you're done eating it. This mm. is a fried chicken. I think this is the first time we like we had it that night. We just ordered the fried chicken because I couldn't eat some stuff because I was pregnant. So this is one of the things I could eat. And also some of the things had shrimp. Yeah. And Harold's allergic to shrimp. So we had to compromise on like the few dishes we could eat together. But it's good. Delicious. Mm -hmm. How did we find this place anyway? Um, We drove past this place a few times, but they would only open from 6 p.m. to like three in the morning or something. And we would always drive by before they were open and we tried to walk in like a few times but they're like hey we're not open so i think one time we we're like it's finally time for us to go try this they're open let's go in and it was just like no turning back from that point it's just it's so delicious like it's consistent yeah definitely one of our go-to places to eat one of my favorite dishes of all time their fried cauliflower it's so 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 good Delicious. Mm, so good. In terms of a fried egg, which I didn't eat when I was pregnant because obviously you like the runny yolk, but when you burst that yolk onto the cauliflower, it's like next level. So anyway, about two days before I actually go into labor, this was like on a Thursday, I had the strongest, most painful contractions ever, but I was like, it's way too early in my opinion although people obviously can give birth earlier than their due date but i was like no i'm not ready like this is not happening so anyway i call triage and they tell me to monitor my contractions and that if they're like two minutes apart then i should definitely come in um and at that point my water hadn't broken yet no, so no. i was just like okay i'll wait it out but i downloaded the contractions app was keeping track of it but they were still 10 minutes apart sometimes but i remember the pain being so bad and i was like there's no way i can do this for two more weeks because i like googled and it said like you can feel contractions up to two weeks before you give birth and i was like no way in hell <laughs> like it was so painful anyway so we just continued on with our night we ended up binge watching a lot of youtube videos about like how to parent because we were really at that point like just scrambling or just re-watching like how to change a diaper how to swaddle a baby how to give them a bath all like the basic stuff that like, just had to refresh our memory yeah and then it was nighttime. 
We were laying in bed, like Harold still hadn't bought all the snacks I had requested yet. <laughs> so he was like, what else do I need to buy? So we were literally talking, laying in bed, and I was like, oh, I need this, this. And in the middle of like a sentence, I was like, oh my God, my water broke. And you're like, are you sure? And I was like, yeah, cause it was just, I don't know how to explain it. It's literally like your water breaks down there and it's like a gush of water and you're like, shit. But I, I like, I've heard because like none of us knew what it feels like. <laughs> yeah, he definitely doesn't what know it what like, it is. <laughs> you know, like what it is. So like, I was kind of worried and like, are you sure that's what it is? Yeah, and, like, but it, like for I, I knew for a fact that's what it was because I never felt anything like that. But people who have told me their birth stories before tell me that when your water breaks, it doesn't mean you're giving birth right away. Like yeah. some people had to get sent home and come back and rest for a bit. So I decided to take my time. I took a nice shower, did half of my makeup, except for my eyeliner because I thought I was going to cry real hard. And then we semi-packed more of our stuff. Then we headed to the hospital. This was like about an hour later, maybe 1.30 in the morning at this time. Contractions were still happening. Oh, yeah, they were still happening, but like but they, they were, they, they were, were like. Uh, yeah, they were not like two minutes apart though, but they were they were still happening. Yeah. Um, I, I think at this time we decided to start packing our stuff. Well, like complete packing our stuff, because yeah, yeah. like you know people are like we have to have like the hospital bag at the door ready to go. That wasn't us. Like it was still open in the living room. Also, we didn't really realize if this was the actual like, are we gonna actually stay in the hospital? Are we gonna be sent back home? and like, you know, hang out for a while. Yeah. Just to be on the safe side, we decided to pack everything and well, just, yeah, then, just in case, just at least have it in the car. Well, like, the nurse, I asked her, I'm like, should I prepare to stay overnight? And she said, just prepare for anything kind of thing. So yeah. we did, like we brought most of what we would bring anyway. I ended up bringing way too much, but that's another story. Yeah, when we got to the hospital, we actually entered the wrong way. <laughs> we, we parked at the back, but we didn't know where the entrance was. So we were like, well, there's an emergency entrance in the front. We got out of the car, had up like all the luggage or whatnot, stuff that we had to bring. And so we're walking towards the front and every two, two, three <laughs> steps that Louise took, she's like, hold on, hold on, I'm having a contraction. Yeah. Right? And like, and like the most excruciating pain, I could see it in her face. Squeezing his hands. Yeah, and I'm like, <laughs> And it's happening literally every three to five steps. Hold on, we gotta stop here. At this point, I'm like, we're, we're having this baby in this, <laughs> in this grimy alleyway. I mean, luckily- Clearly not. Yeah, but I mean, I felt like the baby was coming right now, so. Yeah. But luckily we made it to the, the entrance and I don't know, I guess mm -hmm. we'll continue from there, but it was, it, was, it was scary. So while I was contracting and walking with like our luggage and shit, we walked all the way to the front to the emergency. And I think the guard that was working at the time was I guess new or like new to like the COVID protocols. I like appreciate it. Like he was asking all of the pre-screening questions, but I was literally like, <gasps> like in pain, I was clearly ready to go. Yeah. And then the other security guard was like, you're in labor, right? And I was like, yeah. And she's like, okay, enough, follow me. And then it was like a maze. Like hospitals are just way confusing. By the time we got up to like where we needed to be, the nurse asked me all the questions and she was actually the nurse I had spoken to right before we left. Cause I called again, just to tell her, hey, I think my water broke, we're coming in. And so she remembered me and like, I guess my conversation from before. So she admitted us to one of like the waiting rooms, I guess you can say. And at the time, as I tell people like COVID went out the window, I was gripping onto like the bed rails. I was like, oh, save me. And no germs existed to me at that time. Cause like everything was fair game. And to make it worse, there was a lady in the room in front of us. The doors are like the sliding doors. And like, there's like a little crack and obviously it's not soundproof, but you could just hear her screaming bloody murder like <laughs> screaming and i was just like okay shit i thought i was in pain like this girl seems like she's gonna die like yeah. she scared me a little bit because i was just like okay i don't think i'm at that level yet but i also don't want to be at that level no. i thought she was actually giving birth and i'm like Whoa, what's like going is this on? the place so at the time the nurse came in and she's like are you planning on getting an epidural and i was like hell yeah like there was no way i was gonna skip that out i'm like give it to me asap whenever you can do it. She's like, yeah, cause we gotta book the anesthesiologist. And I was like, sure, get him now. We need it now. Yeah, but you knew, you knew going in that you were gonna, I was gonna take care, take regardless, care of the girl like anyway. I wasn't gonna try to be a hero. I commend people that give birth without it because I, I really don't 
know if I could have survived without it. It was like so painful. At that point, that wasn't the labor room yet. So then she checked me to see how far I was dilated and she said I was like seven centimeters. And she was like, you're definitely staying overnight. It was just great because we had packed everything. So yeah. we were pretty much good to go to stay there. But it was just like go time. And at that point, you're just like not really mentally prepared yet because our end goal was July 30th. And at this point, it was July 18th. And you're just like, I guess it's fucking happening. Yeah, I think at that point, we were just ready to have this baby. Like I was ready because I was just like, this is, it just has to happen because I'm here. Yeah. I'm like huge, about to pop, gushing everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> it's like if they were to send us home and- I think it would have been back, worse. Yeah, it's just like, it'd just be too much. I mean, yeah. like, we were there and like, might as well just wait it out and have this baby. So what's happening right now? My water broke and we're in the hospital. So Scary. We're, just, we're just waiting for uh, Louise to get checked out by the doctor and see if everything's okay. Yeah. See you guys in a bit. Hunter, you're coming. You gonna watch this video and be like, that's disgusting. <laughs> oh, did you move? No, I just laughed. So yeah, at that point, they're like, okay, you're gonna go to like the delivery room. So we had to walk there and it wasn't on the same floor, I don't believe. I think you have to go no. up like an elevator or something, but either way, still contracting at this point. So. Holding onto the, the rails. On <laughs> yeah, in, in the, the hospital. Hallway, just like trying to like, oh, hold on, hold on. I'm just. Yeah, <laughs> like wearing like a gown with like no back, you know, like one of those. And I'm just like, wait, just give me a moment. Every at least two minutes. Yeah. But they could have get. Did it, they gave you a wheelchair? No. No, that was after I gave birth. Oh yeah. Yeah. No, I so I had to walk there. I guess they didn't want you to like to, to dirty up their wheelchair. I don't know. Anyways, I don't know. Yeah. But it was just. It was a long walk. It felt like forever. But we got to like the labor room, and it was like very nice. I was really impressed. I was like, wow, this is a really great. I could stay here for a while. It was like really clean. The washroom was like nice. It was and big. Huge. It was like a. It was like a suite almost. almost yeah. Like a small apartment. It, it was actually, bigger than our place. I'm pretty <laughs> sure. Pretty sure it's bigger than our place. I'm pretty uh, sure. I'd say we're about the same size, but it was yeah. a big. It was a nice room. And they had a bathtub in the washroom for I guess anyone who was gonna do like a water birth. I'm assuming, but. We got there and then I think like shortly after the anesthesiologist came in and administered the epidural and, <laughs> and he got mad at me. Anyway. Not, not me, it was the, uh, the doctor. The, the, the anesthesiologist got mad at me. He was like telling me, okay, I'm gonna administer the epidural. And when you get it, you can't move, obviously, like everyone knows this, like you can't move or else like you could be like paralyzed or whatever, it could hit a nerve. So I was like, okay, cool. And then he's like, but if I'm giving it to you and you feel a contraction coming on, let me know. So I was like, all right, cool. Obviously I get a contraction when he's giving me the epidural. And then I was like, okay, I'm contracting. And he was like, stay still. And starts yelling. And I was like, oh my God. I'm like, you told me to tell you when I'm having a contraction. And then he was like, well, I'd like to administer it when people are getting a contraction because then they're already in pain. And I was like, holy shit. <laughs> it was just like... So he basically tricked you. <laughs> he tricked me, but but it worked. Yeah, yeah. Did he say something like, uh, like hold still or else we, or we have to, oh, do, this all, <laughs> we have to like... do this all over again. <laughs> If you don't hold still, we're gonna have to do this all over again. And you're like, okay. No, I like, I literally did not say a word after that because I was just like holding in like my anger. But in my head, I was like, you son of a. <laughs> I actually never like, seen Louise like ball and like be in so much pain ever. But I didn't like cry out loud. No, but it, I could yeah. see it in your face. Yeah, like, no, I, I was see, in pain. I could see like the yeah. pain. I was like, she's hurting right now. And I was just like, you're, whatever you need to do. And squeeze any part I of my did. body. I don't. I don't know if you wore your wedding ring, but I. No, did. you did. I did, and like. Cause you, you had to take it, it off. It hurt. Yeah, I took it off. Cause <laughs> you were like, like you were squeezing my fingers together, and like. Yeah. Like, and it was. Yeah, it was pretty painful. Like what you see on TV when the mom is like squeezing onto like her partner's hand. That is real life. I did that. Mm. I didn't think I, I. I thought it was like an exaggeration all the time, but like I did that. Anyway, I don't know what time it is in the morning at this point, but the nurse that took over at that point pretty much had us wait in the room. She actually let us sleep for a little bit because yeah. she knew that it was gonna be 
Well, this is what she told us after the fact anyway. She said that she knew labor was gonna be very tiring, like obviously, especially for me. So she wanted us to have like the most sleep, rest, energy. So I actually didn't end up seeing anyone or getting into like laboring or anything up until maybe like nine or 10 or something. Yeah. We had a good little nap session. I had some jello in between. You had like nothing. I don't know, you had some water. Yeah. I don't know, I think I gave you some leftover jello because I couldn't eat anymore. To be honest, I wasn't even thinking about eating or anything. Yeah, I think you were just excited or yeah. anxious or something. I was just like, just trying to take it all in and mm -hmm. like... <laughs> but he, like, he filmed some of it, so we'll show like some clips. But the most important part, it's so odd. Like the most important part, which is when Hunter actually comes out and the doctor actually says, you want to meet your like little peanut or something mm -hmm. like when he came out and the film literally stops there mm -hmm. at like a most random time as soon as hunter came out like the, the camera just stopped filming yeah pretty it's much weird. like yeah it was, it was like pretty much the entire footage was fine like me pushing yeah by the time it got to the end like i mean i thought it was still filming obviously but when i went to go check back yeah we went to go it literally it. cuts off when when hunter comes out it was uh yeah, it's kind of odd that it stopped it, right yeah. before it's like a little came out. ghost angel in the room. Yeah. Okay, a quarter of a push. Touch my Okay, yeah, thanks, Grace. Get back here for you. All right, check this out. Hi, Hunter. Hi, so I started pushing, I believe it was like a little before 11 because I remember only actually pushing and using like the breathing techniques for pushing for less than an hour. And I, I tell people all the time, like I feel like the nurses were bullshitting me, the doctor was bullshitting me because they're all like, you're doing so well, you're pushing so great. It's funny because you'd have to do like three deep breaths when you're holding at the peak, you have to push. So you have to do that three times in a session every time you would push. And by the third one, I was faking it. I was just like, <laughs> but I wasn't really pushing because like I really couldn't feel it with all the epidural happening. So I was just like, there's no way I'm pushing that great. But literally less than an hour, he was out. Yeah. It was. I don't know. It was just the most quick, but also it's hard to explain. It was really surreal. I could see the time passing because there's literally like a digital clock in front of me. But at the same time, you're not taking in the time. It's progressing. It's coming. I think I was just more so excited yeah, about. I mean, like I think here. you're just in the moment and like yeah, focus on in the zone, <laughs> focusing on like those those pushes and like yeah. breathing. Because every time you did that, you know, I didn't see it though. Yeah, you're not really thinking about anything yeah. else, right? You're, yeah, you're just thinking about Getting delivering baby this baby. Out. Yeah, and it's funny because there's like a mirror panel on top and the nurse is like if you don't want to look or see anything don't look up there and of course i look up there every once in a while because it's just natural like you see a mirror and you're like what's happening i saw like a few glances but i just saw blood i don't i don't i'm not really good with blood and surgery and all that stuff so i was just like Ugh. and i told harold not to look down there I was like whatever you do please don't look down there because it'll never be the same you'll never look at me the same but you did sneak a peek by accident i did sneak a peek <laughs> By accident. Actually, no, it was on purpose. It was on purpose? You told me it was an accident. Which part when I... Like, when, when you saw Hunter's head. Oh, so like the, the doctor was like, okay, your baby's head is out now. So, you know, just instinct alone. I just like, okay, you know, I want to see if the head is actually out. <laughs> so I, I, I turned over and took a look and I'm like, I was like, yeah, his head is actually out. But, you know, I, I seen his head and I'm like, wow, this is like, he's actually on his way. And, and Harold said that like when his head was out, he was just looking around. He was just yeah, like, like Hunter was just like... <laughs> oh, let me see. Okay, he was just like... <laughs> I mean, okay, I wish... he's here, he's here. Yeah, I wish I would have seen that, but like I still don't think I could have like looked at myself the same. I mean, like, <laughs> I wish we, I could have taped that, but I mean... I, I wouldn't have watched it to be very honest with you. Yeah. I think I would have I, like felt I, I think that would be like interesting to, to watch. The next but... one. The next one. Yeah? Okay. <laughs> Full HD, man. 4K. No. 4K. <laughs> 720. <laughs> Very low quality. They had actually increased my epidural because when they gave me the first dose, I guess, I could still feel some contractions. They weren't as strong, but the nurse was like, are you still contracting? Like, can you still feel it? And I said, yeah, I, like, I thought you were still supposed to, but she's like, no, you, you're not. So she gave me like this button and she's like, if you need it, press this button and I'll administer more. But it's like, it has like a cap, so like you don't, press it too much. In my head, I was like, yeah, I'm not gonna press this button, but I was like, I'm gonna press this button. <laughs> and I pressed it. It felt like, it was such a weird feeling. It felt like 
cool, like a cool line running down your back. It was really weird. Like you can actually feel it. Yeah, going like the your epidural. Body. Yeah, for sure. It was like really weird, but at that point, it was like literally felt so so high. Like I was like floating. I remember turning to Harold because he was like here, and I was like, I feel high. It felt. You, say you look high. It did. <laughs> Like it felt, it felt good. Like it didn't feel like I was in pain anymore, but I could still feel my legs obviously because that's like the most important part so you could push. Yeah, so when I started pushing, the nurse realized that he was in a sunny side up position, um, which means that his head was facing towards the sky. He wasn't breached, so his head was still like downwards, but his head was facing up. It's common, but it's not an ideal birth position. It's more painful for the mom and it actually increases your labor time. So at that point they had told me to lay on my side with like one of those peanut exercise balls in between my legs for like half an hour to see if he would flip around. And he did miraculously. But when I started pushing again, he had flipped right back. So what the doctor had to do was insert her hand and flip him up so that when I was pushing, she could hold him and pull him out at the same time which worked yeah. because they said if that didn't work, we might have to lay on my other side again. And I was like, I just want to try, let's try it. And it worked out, he came out. Oh, it's mommy, it's mommy. Oh, you're so precious. <laughs> it's mommy, yeah. Oh, you calm down. Guys, you're gonna be like one push to like come fast. I hope the so. The next baby? Oh yeah, you Hi. did that so oh. fast. Yeah. People always ask, do you feel it? Do you feel the baby coming out? Like obviously you do. When I was pushing, I could feel like when his head was coming out. I felt like when the lady was saying his shoulders were like coming out, I could feel that. But it was more so pressure as opposed to pain. Mm -hmm. And she did say that I did tear a little bit, but my last push she said just give like a quarter of a push so that I don't tear much more. And then when he did come out, they did the whole like put him on my chest, clean him up obviously before that, and then skin to skin bonding. And while they were doing that, they were like sewing me up down there and I could feel that. But I feel like I was just so full of like adrenaline and joy and excitement and in so much awe. I feel like I was just staring at him for like an eternity. I was just like, he's here. Like it's so surreal. The smallest, hairiest baby came out and he's on my chest he smells like cornflakes <laughs> did you feel when i cut the umbilical cord no i didn't feel that like i had no idea when that happened but i do you remember them saying do you want to cut the umbilical cord? yeah I, I do remember that but everything was kind of a blur i don't know what order anything came in but i also do remember when they pushed down on my abdomen so i could push out the placenta yeah i remember that like i remember like it all coming out it wasn't as gross and as weird as I honestly imagined. And I don't like blood, surgery, any of that stuff. So it, it wasn't as bad as I thought it could have been mm -hmm. or would have been. You wanna hold my finger? Maybe this one. <laughs> Hi. You did such a good job. You did a really good job. In one of my posts, I mentioned that when we got to the hospital, the lady had asked me if my insurance covers a private room or blah, 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 blah. But I, that literally slipped my mind. It was literally something I didn't think about. So we ended up in a shared room, which I didn't mind. It was whatever. It was one other person and they were really courteous, nice. I think she had a C-section. <laughs> she did. So she was actually going to stay there maybe another an extra night yeah. longer than us. I feel like she was there a night before us too. So maybe she was there for three days, yeah. but they were very nice. They didn't really speak to them a whole lot, but if we saw them in the he passing, yeah. then we'd pass. be like, hey, or just like the head nod. Yeah. <laughs> Our nurses were super nice. Yeah, they were really good. Yeah, there was like an older lady and she was very knowledgeable and really kind. And then there was a younger woman who did, I guess like the night shift. I feel like her tips resonated more with me. I feel like she was more relatable and had more newer, fresher tips. So I really appreciated her, but we only saw her for that one evening. Yeah.
And then the next day, Hunter got his shots, did his test, like his hearing test. Oh yeah. They pricked the bottom of his foot for like blood tests. They gave him the vitamin K. Vitamin K? Yeah, and then I also saw a lactation consultant who scared the crap out of me. She'd be like, it's like this. And she'd like grab your boob and just like shove it in Hunter's mouth. And I'm like, this is breastfeeding. So I think maybe she had traumatized me a little yeah, bit. Yeah. Other, other like, than that. Yeah, she's literally just like. Yeah, she's like, it's so easy. Just, just grab, grab my boob. boob, like from my hand. I was like, oh shit. Like grab my boob and I just throw it. It's like, she like, put his head like this, like this. And I was like, wow, you're like hurting my baby. But other than that, it was like really good. Everyone was super nice. Oh yeah, sure. everybody was nice. Even a lactation consultant, like she wasn't like a mean girl or nothing. I just don't think she understood not everyone can get it right away. So yeah. I feel she was like nice. she just wasn't to the degree of niceness as everybody as every, else. Everyone else was know? just like 10 out of 10 nice and she was like maybe like a nine, you yeah. know? The night before, he had his first bath with that really nice overnight nurse and she did such a great job. She got all like the weird scalpy stuff out of his hair. He was crying like his head off though because he's obviously a new baby getting accustomed to the world. But I was like, there's no way I'm doing that on my own for the first time. We didn't shower there either. Yeah, me neither. Like, I just felt like we were only gonna be there for one night and we only live like, what, 15, 20 minutes yeah, away? 20 minutes away. Yeah, and I just, I get grossed out of germs and like putting my feet on dirty, wet floors. It's just like one of my pet peeves. So I was like, I'm just gonna hold off till we get home and I'm in our own home, yeah. comfortable. Yeah, I was like, if Louise doesn't shower, then I'm the <laughs> <laughs> I don't have to shower. He's like, what? She's dirtier than me. We got home and I remember, I don't know, I think I showered first. Yeah, you showered yeah, first. I showered yeah. first because I was like, I'm not sitting on anything. I'm like so dirty. So. Well, while I looked after Hunter by for myself the, for, for the first, first time. time. Yeah. yeah, that was pretty scary because right when I was done getting ready, obviously it's Harold's turn to get ready. And I remember sitting on the couch and he's in the rocker yeah. thing. But I just remember looking at him and going, Holy crap, like this is like, this is a forever thing now. He's There's, really here. Yeah, he's really here. There's no turning back. Our life before will never be the same. No. You know what I mean? But obviously now, in a good way, now yeah. that we're looking back on it, yeah. we're just now, like- Now I can't even picture our life without, without, him. without him. Yeah, it's like, yeah. what were we doing before? Like, <laughs> before we had a baby, like, you know? How much free time did I yeah. actually really have? So after we get ready, we grab our stuff and we end up going to my parents' house because my mom offered to help us out for the first two weeks at least. She said we can stay for as long as we want to. Yeah, so we ended up going there and it was honestly the best help we could ever have gotten. All the meals were made, laundry was always done. If we woke up and needed some help taking care of him, they're like, just leave him with us, go back to sleep kind of thing. It was great. <laughs> it was great. And I remember by the time the two weeks ended, my mom was like, if you need to stay longer, just let me know. And I was like, you know what? We really appreciate it. We love the help and everything, but we, we really just gotta figure this out on our own. And I think it's also partially because my mom is gonna miss him. Yeah. We ended up just staying like exactly two weeks. We left on the Sunday, two weeks later, and we came back here. And then it was the start of our journey. So as we mentioned, we gave birth, obviously when COVID was happening, when it was a thing, um, it was still like a little unknown. It was dying down a little bit, but they're still taking all the extra precautions. So security guards, when we first came into emergency, were very thorough. Thorough, they were very thorough when it came to like pre-screening. So that was very encouraging for us coming into like a hospital. Cause I don't know about you, but I had a lot of anxiety about giving birth during COVID because there are some situations where I heard the dad or the partner or whoever wasn't able to stay overnight or even couldn't stay for the birth. And I don't know what I would have done or if I could have done it at all without Harold because he was a huge support not even just like by me squeezing his hand, but even him just telling me like, yeah, you're doing a great job. And I was like, what? <laughs> yeah, it was really good. Um, yeah, thanks. Oh yeah, and then some people I heard had to even get a COVID test done because I guess their temperatures were high. I think I was like, the nurse told me I was very close to almost getting a COVID test because I was almost at fever level. But at the same time, I was highly pregnant in summertime. Obviously I was running hot. Thank goodness I didn't have to go to like to that because I, I don't know. I like, it sounds scary to me. I'll look I mean, at like, thoughts. but either way, like I would still, have, I would still do one. Yeah, Just, you know what, if, if I had point, to be in the room with her, I take the COVID test no matter, yeah. it doesn't matter what it is, as long as I'm there yeah. you know, to support you. For me, it was, I was very go with the flow at that point because at one point they were like, Hunter was sunny side up when he was born and they were saying that if that's the case, if he stays in that position, then they might have to give me a C-section and I was just like, whatever. Yeah. Whatever it is, do it, I'll do it because 
I just want to see him. I want to make sure he's safe. I'm, I want to make sure he comes out yeah. safe. With regards to masks in the hospital, so we obviously had to come in with a mask on and walk in the hallways with it on. But when I was in the room and I was still having my contractions, I was like, can I please take off my mask? Like I couldn't breathe. And the nurse was like, oh yeah, you can take off your mask when you're in the room. But when you're walking in any hallway, you need your mask on, which was great because it was so hard to breathe through those contractions, especially when you're like deep breathing and deep breathing with a mask is quite difficult. But it was good to know that at least in the space where we were contained, we didn't have to wear one. But everyone else, like all the medical personnel and everyone, obviously wearing all masks, sometimes face shields, obviously scrub caps, um, taking all the necessary precautions for that. So I asked some people to ask me some questions or see if they had some questions with regards to my birth story. So I'm gonna share those questions and we can hopefully answer them for you. So the first question is, what did you decide to do for the pain management and why? So for pain management, as you know, um, I did take an epidural. I decided to go that route because I'm not opposed to any drugs or whatever. Like if it can make my labor easier, then I'm all for it. What also helped me through my contractions, even at home, was deep breathing. Every time I got a contraction, I would just hold my breath up until like it hurt the most at least I think from what it hurt the most. And then at that, after that point, I would just like release like a really long exhale. And that really helped with the pain. Like it didn't make it go away. It wasn't a magical antidote for it, but it definitely helped with lessening the pain of those contractions. Um, the next question is, did you have a name picked out already? Yes, we did. So we already knew the sex of our baby. And besides that, Harold and I, we already had come up with a name long, 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 long before, even before we were even like super serious together. But we just like thought of a name Hunter and we thought it was a nice name. And plus my family's names follow pattern. So we're all like LA. So I wanted to sort of follow the same pattern with our family. So I wanted to be like HL. So his middle name is Lyle. So his name is Hunter Lyle. Third question you have here is how long did you labor for? Labor altogether counts technically, I think, when your water breaks. A long time. So let's say like maybe 11 hours in labor, but pushing wise, an hour. I'm glad the pushing wasn't very long. I didn't mind waiting in between my water breaking and the pushing as long as I wasn't in that like position and like in that uncomfortable state with like Hunter just hanging out for so long. I don't know how I would have dealt with that, but pushing for an hour. Okay. Less than an hour. <laughs> And the last question is, what was the first meal you had right after giving birth? So right after giving birth, I'm pretty sure I had some hospital food because that's what they give you. But I think when I got home to my parents' house, one of the first meals that I can remember is having sushi. They got me like this huge sushi, sushi bowl. Yeah, it was yeah. like huge, huge, like any roll you could think of. A lot of it had shrimp in it because maybe like they ordered like a random party tray so you couldn't have a lot of it meant more for me though. I was craving sushi hardcore, obviously, like the raw fish aspect of it. Um, I was still having like California rolls, cucumber rolls, but that's like mad boring. <laughs> but yeah, first meal after I gave birth was sushi. Thanks for joining Harold and I while we talk about my birth story. And while I eat all the food. Because obviously I did all the talking. <laughs> hope you enjoyed my story. I hope you could relate. Um, or at least I hope you could have a good laugh out of it. See you at the next video. Maybe I'll be joined by Harold, maybe not. We'll see, it's COVID, he's my only guest. <laughs> and as always, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share, follow me on Instagram, along came mama, and all that good stuff. Thanks for watching and see you soon.